Things can change quickly in wrestling. With so many moving parts, sometimes it can be hard to call. But in this video, we've got 10 examples of people who managed to predict moments in wrestling well before they actually happened. Number one, Paul Heyman predicts the rise of Steve Austin. We're starting off in 1992, as Paul Heyman was being interviewed on the Pro Wrestling Torch. He would praise stunning Steve Austin, who at the time was a member of Paul's Dangerous Alliance stable in WCW. Heyman would state that Austin was the best wrestler on television at the time, and would lead Pro Wrestling in the year 2000. Steve, who's going to be the man to carry wrestling into the year 2000, as far as the future of wrestling goes, there is not a better prospect, there is not a better person, there is not a better man there is not a better franchise out there today than stunning Steve Austin, the world's television champion, the best wrestler on TV today. And as history proved, Paul was spot on. Now that's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. Number two, Jim Ross believes Cena will main event WrestleMania. Just like Heyman's prediction would come to fruition, JR's belief regarding a young John Cena would also. Back in 2001, having first got a taste of what Cena had to offer, Jim Ross immediately went to Vince McMahon and told him that Cena would main event WrestleMania in five years or less. Have you seen anybody you liked? I said, as a matter of fact, I really did. I think I saw a kid that'll headline WrestleMania in five years or less. He said, I think you need to go home and take a shower. <laughs> You're delusional. But I was high on John Cena. Yeah. Ooh, and guess what? It turned out. <laughs> it turned out. And as we would see just four years after Vince and JR's conversation, John Cena successfully main evented WrestleMania 21, capturing his first WWE Championship from JBL. Number three, Smart Marks Forum Predictions, 2003. But it wasn't just JR who telegraphed the rise of John Cena, as a few posters on internet forums from the early 2000s also reckoned Cena would reach superstardom. With one user going as far to say in 2003 that Cena would reach a level of success similar to that of The Rock, and John would achieve this by WrestleMania 25. And it would be at that show where Cena would win his fifth world championship whilst featuring in one of the main event matches for the fourth WrestleMania in a row. Another poster on the same forum thread also managed to successfully predict the decline of pay-per-view for WWE by 2014 due to the advancement of the internet. They shockingly even nailed the year correctly, as it was in 2014 the WWE Network would launch, allowing fans to watch all past and future WWE pay-per-views online. Number 4. Usenet Forums Archive Posts Staying on the topic of old wrestling forums, and one thing that's clear when going through them is that fans' opinions back then were just as crazy as they are now, with some fans already getting tired of Rock and Austin in the late 90s, despite both doing the best work of their career during this period. But amongst the bad takes, there were some fans who actually managed to foreshadow future events. One poster likened John Cena to a white rapper, following his debut match versus Kurt Angle in 2002, while another user predicted Triple H would hold the World Championship for a year after the game had just got engaged to Stephanie McMahon in early 2003. Triple H again, victorious at WrestleMania! Number 5, Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer predict Triple H and Stephanie's rise and Shane's departure. Triple H's eventual marriage to Stephanie would ultimately lead to them being featured on television together again, with Triple H having become an executive in WWE. Their rise to power was something Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer predicted back in 2001. I honestly don't see Hunter's and Stephanie's marriage going on for like too much longer. They've been together for like, what, over like a year now, so you know. A year Hunter and a half. And... will actually go on forever and uh, they'll be married in real life, and yeah. Hunter will own the company and get the last laugh over <laughs> even Vince McMahon. With Brian's co host Dave Meltzer even jokingly stating how Shane McMahon would no longer be involved with the company. Shane will be out working in the coal mines, right? <laughs> hey, he will. This actually came to be true, as Shane has now left the WWE twice in the last 12 years. Number 6, Brian Alvarez predicts AEW in 2011. Brian Alvarez would strike gold again in 2011, when he would discuss what a potential second major wrestling promotion should do in order to be a success. There is no reason that you cannot create a wrestling product where you get all of the guys together and you say, do what you want to do. I would like to run a promotion where I just said, listen, I'm going to hire a bunch of you, entertain me. Maybe one of these days, somebody's going to come along with some money or a wrestling fan and they'll think, let's give this a shot. Let's give this a shot. A lot of what Brian suggested would ultimately be how All Elite Wrestling would cement their position as the number two wrestling company in the world, having burst onto the scene in 2019 to much fanfare and success. Number 7, Squared Circle Subreddit's Bold Predictions. 
We're going back to the internet forums for this next one with the squared circle subreddit. In 2015, users made some bold predictions for wrestling in the next 10 years, with one guessing that there would be another company to compete with WWE in the Monday Night Wars, like head-to-head -head competition. Another Redditor replied, agreeing with the condition that the war would be against NXT and that Triple H wouldn't be involved. They were half right as AEW would indeed go head to head with NXT in 2019. However, NXT would be comprehensively beaten to such an extent where they eventually switch nights and then completely revamp their show to the point where Triple H would no longer be part of the brand. The same Reddit thread also predicted that Daniel Bryan would retire and that Dean Ambrose would leave WWE by 2020 and they even speculated that he would have health issues. Number 8, Dolphins1925 predicts WWE pay-per-views. While some of Reddit's bold predictions regarding WWE proved true, there was one user who is most famous for his WWE predictions on the site. From 2013 to 2015, the Reddit account Dolphins1925 predicted countless WWE pay-per-view matches with incredible accuracy. Dolphin would reveal that he had an inside source within WWE that leaked the results of pay-per-view matches. Month after month, Dolphin's predictions would continue to come true forcing WWE to even address the situation publicly, while internally the company began to take stricter measures to ensure there were no further leaks. Eventually, Dolphin's predictions began to unravel, with a number of them being incorrect. This led to many speculating that he in fact did not have an inside source, and instead was making predictions based on what the betting odds were for each match prior to the respective pay-per-view beginning. Following the backlash, Dolphin would begin to only post his predictions on Twitter, and from here on, they would remain hit and miss in terms of their accuracy until eventually, Dolphin's 1925 disappeared completely. But it still can't be denied how impressive his initial streak of correct predictions were in 2013, regardless if he truly did have a source within WWE or not. Number 9, Brian Danielson predicts his future. Here is an insane level of foreshadowing from Brian Danielson regarding his career. While speaking on the 2009 documentary Wrestling Road Diary, Brian ponders his future as he is all set to sign for WWE. Brian first says that if WWE were to fire him after two years, he would still survive in wrestling. If they decide to fire me after two years, I'll survive it. He remains confident about his chances in the company, even if he isn't pushed heavily. But should his health result in him not being able to wrestle anymore, it will still be okay. Wrestling is very important to me and I've worked very hard for it. But if all of a sudden, say if my health says that I can't wrestle anymore, do you know what? I'll be okay with that. Hopefully everything goes through with my health issues with WWE. Brian closes by saying that if WWE isn't for him, he will happily move on. If it's not fun, then, you know, move on to something else. It's crazy how Brian pretty much foreshadows his WWE career, from him getting fired after a year, getting himself over despite not being pushed, being forced to walk away due to injury, and then leaving because it wasn't as fun for him anymore. Brian was under no illusions, and it's perhaps his level-headed mindset which sees him continue to have great success in wrestling to this day. Number 10, Chris Benoit, Wikipedia prediction. We've saved perhaps the most eerie prediction for last. 14 hours before the police discovered the bodies of Chris Benoit, his wife Nancy and son Daniel, someone would edit Chris Benoit's Wikipedia page to say that Nancy Benoit had died. And this was why Chris was unable to attend the Vengeance 2007 pay-per-view. The nature of Wikipedia is such that anyone can go online and edit certain pages, and this is exactly what happened here. The edit would affect the police investigation regarding the double murder-suicide of the Benoit family. The editor would eventually come out and state how they heard rumours online suggesting that Nancy Benoit had passed away, and this was why they made the edit, citing an unfortunate coincidence. The editor then apologised and was cleared of any charges following a police investigation. Well, there you have it folks. 10 crazy wrestling predictions that actually came true. What are some predictions you have for the next 10 years in the wrestling landscape? Drop them in the comments below and you never know, you might be featured in a video like this in 10 years time. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, stick around on the channel and check out our previous video on 10 times wrestlers got angry for real with their opponents. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.